Good day and welcome to week three. We're going to be discussing qualitative and quantitative designs. So here we go. A well formulated research question is critical when planning a study. I know I've said that ad nauseum, but it really is the key to the whole um, process. Again, you're not going to wear shorts and a t-shirt, most likely to a wedding. You're going to wear appropriate clothing. So you're going to choose a appropriate uh, research uh, design uh, to answer your question. And it's well formulated. That gets at your PICO questions that you've been working on in class. The nature of this question will determine whether it's most likely addressed by a qualitative or quantitative study. So again, you're looking at your research question, and that's going to drive your paradigm. Paradigms can be either qualitative or quantitative in nature. Qualitative research is broad. It uses an inductive process. Researchers integrate information to help develop a theory or description that helps describe the phenomena under consideration. It uses naturalistic methods such as interviews or observing to collect and analyze data that are more descriptive or narrative and subjective in nature. So you're going to be getting at your interviews that are very narrative, your observations that are very subjective. Qualitative research has its place in building theory and developing hypotheses that can be tested in subsequent quantitative research. If you think about all the early research done with pain, much of it was uh, early on was qualitative in nature. They looked at the lived experience of someone describing uh, what it was like to live in pain, whether that was acute or chronic pain. They described different types of pain so that they were able to come up with definitions such as somatic, visceral, and neuropathic pain. Uh, that was generated through qualitative research. From there, they tested uh, in a quantitative fashion um, what types of interventions are effective with uh, neuropathic pain. Are they different than the uh, interventions that are effective with somatic or visceral pain? So these kinds of things are more specific in nature and are more quantitative in design. Qualitative research describes, explores, explains. It's very broad. It is also useful in early developmental and exploratory phases of research when a phenomena is poorly or really not well understood and uh, we want to understand the nature of it before we get more specific and look at it in a quantitative fashion. Quantitative research uses a deductive process where research generate predictions that are tested. Scientific methods apply in a very orderly and systematic progression. You define the problem, you select the concepts, and you look at a solution to the problem. These types of research designs answer questions such as how many, how much, or to what degree. They involve formal measures of information and analysis that use statistical methods. Examples include intervention studies, such as randomized controlled trials and observational studies such as case controlled studies. And again, I, I encourage you strongly to uh, 
be familiar with these kinds of concepts that are defined in your glossary. I can promise you that many, many of these concepts are going to pop up in a matching kind of or short answer format on quiz three. Specific uh, purposes of quantitative studies. They describe, explore, explain on a more specific level. They also predict and control. Methods allow researchers to better understand a concept in statistical language that's called a variable in a well-defined population. Again, I, I go back to it's unrealistic to look at all adolescents. Um, the researchers are going, most likely going to narrow that uh, population to either look at, at um, adolescents of a certain age range or adolescents of a certain gender or adolescents with a specific um, situation to make the research more uh, feasible. And they're going to look at that uh, concept or variable in relationship with another variable. And they're going to examine that relationship. Quantitative studies fall into three major design categories. We've alluded to that in uh, week two, non-experimental, quasi-experimental, and experimental. Samples are chosen from a larger defined population. Again, note that word defined. Um, and typically, um, the uh, sample is chosen in a representative manner so that inferences can be made back to the population. The goal is to generalize to the population and make predictions or in other words, test the hypothesis. All of this starts with a good research question. And that's why getting a good PICO question is critical to the whole cup of tea. The research question includes three critical parts for quantitative study. The population, the interventions or exposure, and the outcome. And you're going to see elements of the PICO question here. So let's talk about population. Again, that's the, the population of interest. So we look at who are the patients or the clients. Who are, uh, are they individual, persons, families, communities, or groups? Is there a particular age or sex grouping? And what is their specific health care problem? The interventions or exposures look at what is predicted therapeutic or health services interventions that we're going to be more interested in knowing about. What are the management strategies we're interested in comparing? If we're looking at harm assessment, what are the potentially harmful exposures that we're concerned about? And the outcome looks at the consequences. What are the consequences of the intervention or exposure of which we're interested? We've talked about this a little bit before. We'll touch on it again. There are significant design considerations. Non-experimental designs uh, tend to have the least amount of control. Therefore, they are not as powerful about generating statistical results. Experimental designs, such as randomly controlled trials, have more controls, and uh, therefore they have greater statistical power. This is why you might see the statement, observational studies provide weaker evidence than randomized trials. It goes back to that hierarchy of evidence that we've talked about again and again. Think about that triangle, that pyramid, that hierarchy of evidence, and what is in the upper levels and what is in the lower levels. 
Small samples and non-randomized selection of participants can limit the generalizations of findings. That's because they won't yield as strong results. They're not as a strong of an evidence. Parametric statistics are often not appropriate for studies with small sample size and non-random samples. We've talked about that before. That's why researchers do um, histograms or um, box and whisker plots or stem and leaf plots on their data uh, to see where the data fall so that they know what type of statistical test to apply. The most appropriate method is cho chosen. Lack of a control or comparison conditions, so essentially a, a non-experimental research design, will affect the validity and yield weaker evidence. This is so critical. We've talked about this uh, uh, before. We'll talk about it again. Because um, minimizing bias is uh, critical to um, get valid results. If your control involves imposing conditions so that biases are minimized, you're going to maximize the precision and the internal validity. So when you have statistical results, you have more confidence that those results are true and didn't happen by random error or by chance alone. A well-designed intervention or harm study also includes a control or alternative condition group. So you can compare what happened in your intervention group and what happened in your control group. The goal is to increase the validity of the findings by eliminating systematic bias and reducing measurement error. I'm going to briefly touch on mixed methods. We're not going to discuss this in any great depth, but it is a whole body of, of um, appropriate research designs that is out there. Mixed methods uses a combination of qualitative and quantitative approaches. Typically, they'll start with a small sample and do a developmental phase. And then with that same research question, uh, they'll look at small exploratory studies and maybe do a small pilot or feasibility study. Uh, we're not going to um, talk about this again, but it's important to, to be familiar with these concepts um, because uh, you'll see it pop up in the literature. It might They might talk about a mixed method uh, design that can be either sequential. You can do the qualitative first and then the quantitative, or it can be simultaneous. There is um, some journals about mixed methods or research and lots of books and all that kind of stuff. It is a specific, uh, very complex research design. But it's easing into the nursing literature. It's very common in educational and psychological research. Not so common in nursing research. But I, I suspect that that will be changing with the um, more and more nurses going to get their PhD, uh, which really focuses is a research doctorate. We talked about that a little bit in class. There are two levels of uh, doctorate preparation in nursing. The PhD is the research doctorate. The DNP is the clinical practice doctorate. The PhD generates original research. The DNP uses or applies and appraises original research. So again, mixed methods is probably an approach or design that's going to be popping up in the nursing literature more in the future, but is not so common now. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this um, lecture.